Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my rare chase cards from the upcoming Outlaws of Thunder Junction set. So, let's get into it. I'm going to be continuing with my grading system, 0 to 10, how good I think they're going to be, how worthwhile they are to keep your eyes out for. I understand with, with that with rares, you can't like chase them in the same way that you can with mythics and masterpieces, so you have to actually pull the darn things from packs, but these are going to be the rares that I think you're going to want to keep your eyes out for, and then build around if you do wind up getting them, because there's a lot of strength in the rares in this set. The first one is going to be another round. This is a 14 mana white spell with when you match, when you make a match by swap, if this card's in your hand, increase this card's level by one. Create a copy in your hand of each creature you can, when you cast this, right? This, this next part is when you cast this. So uh, when you cast another round, create a copy in your hand of each creature you control. Then those cards gain full mana. Then, reinforce each creature you control X times, permanently. X is this card's level. You don't see my hands, but I just did the mind blown thing, because this card is absurd. Not only are you going to be getting an extra copy of everything, but you're going to be reinforcing it potentially multiple times, and then you're going to get another copy of it down on the battlefield. You're just getting so many reinforcements. If there's enter the battlefield effects, you're going to be triggering them. So if you're thinking Atraxa, yep, this is going to make Atraxa go infinite really easily. If you're thinking Galta, yep, that's another good one. The Tortoise, mm -hmm, yep, mm -hmm, yep, this is a good one for that. Any other really powerful creature with an enter the battlefield effect? Mm -hmm. Yep, you're going to like this with that, definitely. Yep, absolutely. If you are playing an objective where you need to cast some number of creatures, mm -hmm. yep, you're going to like this too, because you're going to get a whole bunch of extra copies with full mana, and then you're going to be immediately casting them. Oh, and if you're playing this in a deck that has bonus swaps for some reason, because, you know, you're running Hall of the Gemstone or just something else that gives you bonus swaps, then you're going to be making this thing's level go up by more. And the more you make this thing's level go up, the more you're going to be reinforcing all your creatures. And the more you're reinforcing all your creatures, the faster you're going to whoop your opponents behind. This card is just disgusting. Like, absolutely disgusting. 10 out of 10. This is more powerful than, like... Almost all of the mythics, and even a more than powerful, in my opinion, than almost all the masterpieces. This card is ridiculously good. It is one of the best cards in the set. And it has additional functionality that you can use with, with other cards in the set. Like, there's, there's other cards that this actually pairs with that are already broken on their own that are just going to get even more broken because this thing exists. So, yeah. If you get this thing on day one and you don't get any mythics, don't be upset. This thing is going to be better than whatever mythic it was that you were going to get anyways. I think that the 15 mana spree card that destroys all your opponent's stuff is, like, equally good. But, yeah. I mean, equally good. That's the point. This, equally good. This, this could wind up being, like, the best card in the set. I can't believe this is a rare. Next card. No? You don't want to let me do it? Yeah, you do. Claim Jumper. Claim Jumper is a 14 mana, 3 3 Vigilant. It's a rabbit mercenary. It's a mercenary, which means it's an outlaw. And at the beginning of your turn, you're going to convert X gems to white equal to the number of outlaw creatures you control, including their reinforcements. So we've got a number of ways to make outlaw tokens, or tokens that happen to be outlaws. So this could wind up getting up quite a bit. This could be really useful for outlaw objectives. Uh, and so it could be really useful as well for just like some fun outlaw themed decks. This card is more of like a 5 or a 6 out of 10 for me, where... It could be really good. I think that Healer of the Pride is just better than what this thing is. But nonetheless, this one is outlaw themed. And this set has a bunch of outlaw stuff. So there's potentially a lot of really cool stuff you could do with this. Like if you get a bunch of outlaws and reinforcements, convert the whole world to white. However, if you have that many reinforcements down, you're probably winning the game anyways. Nonetheless, I could see there being a lot of power in this card, and it could be better than I think it is, and so I had to put it here. Anytime that you convert like some near limitless number of gems to a color every turn, 
I feel like it at least needs an honorary mention. Colossal Rattleworm. 13 mana, 6, 5. It's got Flash and Trample. The beginning of your turn, this creature gets plus X plus X. X is the amount of desert cards you control plus 2. That's a permanent plus X plus X buff. Furthermore, when this creature deals combat damage to your opponent's Planeswalker, <laughs> destroy 10 random gems. If you're wondering why I'm laughing, uh, so first things first, this card is, I think, really powerful on its own, right? We're going to ignore pairings with other cards for a hot moment here. But 13 mana for a 6-5 that's going to be boosted uh, by that at least plus 2 every single turn, potentially even more with Deserts. And that also is going to do whenever it deals combat damage to your opponent, destroying 10 random gems, is going to be really good. That's going to trigger a bunch of mana, it's going to, it's going to ding supports, and it's just going to be a general menace. I think it'll be a solidly good card. But then there's also a masterpiece in the set. And that masterpiece is covered in my masterpiece chase video. But it's a 14 mana masterpiece that has whenever it loses shields, you're getting a free land on the battlefield. And the deserts are all lands. So this thing attacks, it's going to destroy gems. Destroying gems is going to lower the support cost on that masterpiece thing, right? That masterpiece support, which will then start bringing more deserts onto the battlefield. And those deserts that are coming out are going to get reinforced because that's how that silly support works, that the desert, the land comes out and then is reinforced. So this thing destroying the gems isn't even going to destroy the deserts. And so then, yeah, that's a way around desert itself right? Because desert is going to lower your mana bonuses when you're converting gems, but it says nothing about when you're destroying gems, which also will trigger all of the activate gems from something like Demolition Field or whatever it's called. But anywho, this has a lot that you can do with other cards in the set, and as a result, I think this card could wind up being very powerful. So I'm going to give this card a 7 out of 10. It's not as powerful as that first thing that I showed, However, there's a lot of sneaky power in this Colossal Router Room, and you might have overlooked it. Don't overlook it. This could be a really good card. Cabal, Profiteering Mayor. Now, this thing is fascinating. This thing is a 17 mana 2-4. When an opposing creature enters the battlefield, if it's a non-token creature, your token creatures get plus one, plus one. Who cares? Then create a copy of that creature on the battlefield under your control. We care. Furthermore, when a token creature enters the battlefield under your control, deal 3 damage to your opponent and you gain 3 life. Okay, let's unpack all the bottom bits of this. Cre when your opponent, when, a, when an opposing creature enters the battlefield, if it's a non-token creature, you get a copy of that as well, for free. So if your opponent's playing Galta, you get a Galta. Your opponent's playing Atraxa, you get Atraxa. Your opponent plays the Tortoise, you get the tortoise. I feel like I mention those cards way too often, but it's just because they're everywhere. I run into them all the dang time, and because they're going to be in standard for, like, years, we're going to be seeing them for a long time. I don't think that desert is going to be enough to stop them. I don't, because, you know, not everyone's going to want to run desert because it's going to be a pain in the butt to run for themselves anyways. But, anywho, this thing is going to give you copies of whatever your opponent is playing, which means that if you're up against a scary deck, this thing is scary. And if you're running this with a token generator, then this thing becomes even more scary because it's just going to go ahead and kill your opponent. You run this with Tainted Adversary, you don't have to worry about those little zombie tokens attacking. Your opponent's just gonna die, like immediately, from all those zombies immediately killing them and giving you life. So there's a lot that you can do with this. You can run this as a defensive card or you can run it as an offensive card or you can run it as both. So this card here uh, stands out to me as like a seven out of 10. Where if I'm, if I'm up against a green planeswalker, if I'm up against a brocon, yeah, this thing, I, I might just slot it into my deck. I think it'll be very cool. Marchesa, Dealer of Death. This is 10 mana for a 3-4. It's a criminal. Well, it's going to commit a crime. It's also a rogue, which means it's an outlaw. And has, when you commit a crime, you're going to fetch one of the first three cards from your library, destroy the others. So uh, when you cast this, it will count as committing a crime. And so you cast this... And then, or you play this, you enter the battlefield, however you want to think of it, uh, you're going to get your 3-4, you're going to have the crime emblem on your planeswalker, and you're also going to fetch one of the first three cards from your library and dump stuff in your graveyard. 
And if that wasn't enough, you're also going to, at the beginning of your turn, every turn, make it so that a random opposing creature gains imminent death. So this thing here, you can play copies of it. It'll work for outlaw decks. It'll work for really just any deck you want in these colors over here anyways. You'll be able to use it to play a card and then fetch something else, throw things in your graveyard, and also get removal. So I could I could see this being a very, very useful card. I think it's I think it's very cool. This one for me is somewhere between seven and eight out of ten. Just because I like that it gives us tempo, I like that it gives us removal, and I like that it gives us options for other cool things and shenanigans that we can do with our decks. So I really like Marchesa Dealer of Death. Pitiless Carnage. Yeah, I like this one too. This kills everything. I like things that kill everything. This is a 14 mana spell, and it reads, destroy all creatures, then draw two cards. That's it. That's all it does. There's nothing else on it. There's no bad mechanic that we're not going to speak of because it's garbage. It's just a 14 mana card that says, destroy all creatures and draw two cards, which is fantastic. We love destroying everything, and I love that not only do we destroy everything, but then we get more back because we're going to be drawing cards. So yeah, this is really, really useful. I will definitely be running this in my black decks because black just hasn't quite had all of the destroy all that I've been wanting in it lately. And this gives me that. I mean, all right, it has plot 14 to return the first creature card from your graveyard to play under your control. So you're going to destroy everything and then get one of your creatures back potentially. And this actually is useful on this card if if we're just if we're being realistic, right? Because with a board wipe card, you're gonna want to fill it up in your hand and just leave it there anyways. And since it's 14 and 14, you're just gonna fill it up, you're gonna have it get plotted, and then it is gonna give you the creature back. So it is cool design, and I shouldn't be salty that plot is garbage in this game. But this is a really cool design for this card, actually. Plot is just bad. This card is good. You want this card. This card for me is like an 8 out of 10. Maybe 8.5, actually, just because I, I will use this card and I'll use it a lot. So I like this card a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Drawing cards, destroying everything, getting stuff back. Really, really good. Yeah, honestly, the more that I think about this card, the design of plot on this is fantastic. This is like one of the only cases where I like plot. Rush of Dread. I honestly felt a rush of dread when I read this card in paper and I was worried about it being adapted to Puzzle Quest and now I see how it's been adapted to Puzzle Quest and I still continue to feel that rush of dread. This is 15 mana. It's got spree, meaning that when we make matches on our turn, our spree counter is going to go up and then we'll get reset at the end of our opponent's turn. And then the three abilities are just bonkers. So spree one, guaranteed. Your opponent discards the first two cards from their hand. You've been charging mana? That's so cute. No, 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 you aren't. Oh, you had creatures. That's adorable. They're dead. Destroy the first and last opposing creatures for Spree 2. You had life? Oh, really? Spree 4 says you don't. Your opponent loses X life equal to the number of cards in their graveyard. There are a lot of ways of throwing cards into our opponent's graveyard. We've got a lot of ways. We've got things like Xander. We've got things like, I want to say Cut Your Losses throws things away for your opponent as well. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just imagining that. Maybe Cut Your Losses is your own graveyard. I think it's your opponent's. Either way, we got, this is going to throw things in the graveyard. This is going to throw things in the graveyard. This is going to ping your opponent. You don't even need the Spree 4. Spree 1 and 2 alone are just ridiculous. Your opponent discards their first two cards and loses their two creatures for 15 is just absurd. This card is just going to be an auto slot into like every black deck I ever run again for the next few years. It's just so good. This is a uh, uh, this is a 9.5 out of 10 for me. It would be a 10 out of 10, but 15 mana is quite a bit. And... Should this be a 10 out of 10? I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. Maybe that'll convince people not to run this card. Because, honestly, the card that I hate running up against the most... Oh, I was going to say it's Infinite Obliteration, but I suppose it's Ambiguity. Well, alright. This this is going to be really annoying to play against. Like, really, really annoying to play against. Anyhow, next card. Satoru the Infiltrator. Yeah, this card is awesome. This is an 8-mana 2-3 with... 
When a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Then, if that card has a mechanic that we will not be speaking of, that card gains half of its mana rounded down. Otherwise, gain four mana. All right, so let's let's pretend that this part here doesn't exist. All right, then if that card has plot, that card gains half its mana. Let, let's pretend this doesn't exist because the the good part about this card is right over here and right over here. So, when a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card, gain four mana. Right? Let's say that we're not running any cards with plot in our deck. Creature enters, draw a card, gain four mana. You can get some really ridiculous loops going with some low cost creatures running this this card right here, or you're just running a token generator, right? Let's say that you're going to use, I don't know, there's just so many token generators, Tainted Adversary, right? You, you drain mana from the first card in your hand, or all the cards in your hand, but you just make it so that you, you just get a few. You start drawing cards. As you're drawing cards, you're gaining mana. If you order your hand correctly, you can have another card enter the battlefield that's going to be a creature, and then you're just going to keep this loop sort of going. So you could create some little mini loops with this card. I think it'll be very useful. I think you'll get to see some really cool decks with this card. Is it going to be OP? No, I don't think so. But will it be, like, properly P? Absolutely. Yeah, no. Satoru the Infiltrator is good. Furthermore, it's a rogue, which means that it's an outlaw. So you can run it for some outlaw shenanigans. And that alone... And that, not that alone, but like that, that additionally makes this more cool. So... Honestly, Satoru the Infiltrator, I think, is going to be a very solid card. This one here, for me, is like in 7.5 or 8, just because this just looks... This just screams easy loop and gaining mana and drawing cards. Like, it just screams easy, easy loop. So, really, really cool card to me. And that's it for my rares. Yep, Satoru is the last one. So... Let me know if there's any rares that I missed. Let me know how you feel about them. Let me know if that first white one terrifies you as much as it terrifies me. Or the black one that I just went over before, this Rush of Dread. Does it bring you dread like it brings me dread? Because I hate discarding my first cards. I hate it so much. But this is going to do it. So, yeah. Really, really good rares in this set. Keep your eyes peeled when you're opening your packs day one. You're going to want to look out for these cards. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.